for today's tutorial we are going to be using Red Heart with Love Stripes yarn and this is a 223 yard skein and this is a medium number four weight yarn. The color I'm using today is Sandbar Stripe. We are also going to be using Red Heart with Love and this is a 370 yard skein and you really don't need too much of your uh, neck color. We will also be using the color taupe. And this is also a number four medium weight yarn. So this will be our neck color and this will be our body color. For today's project, we will be using a H hook, which is a five millimeter crochet hook. And I am using this hook by Boy. You will also need some scissors. I am using my Fiskars and I am also using some pink stitch markers. To begin, you want to make a slip knot. To make a slip knot, simply take your working yarn and I'm going to leave a little bit of extra yarn here at the end for when we tuck in our ends. You want to take your yarn, put it underneath your index, middle, and your ring finger, or just even two fingers is good. You're going to wrap this piece of yarn around your finger, just like an X. And then you want to go ahead, take your hands, and slip this piece right under the hole right here see just slip it in there and you're just going to pull up okay and that's how you create a slip knot just like that and then you're going to take your hook and place it inside of your slip knot and go ahead and pull tight not too tight but just go ahead and pull that closed Now you want to be able to, you know, have some loose tension. You don't want to crochet too tightly because then your work will be a lot smaller. So what we are going to do is chain loosely 38. To chain, you're simply going to yarn over the hook, pull through, and pull through this hole right here, and that makes your first chain. Okay, so there's one, okay, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I am going to keep on loosely chaining 38. Okay, so I have 38 chains here now, and I have chained them loosely, just so it's very easier to double crochet into. Uh, the first uh, foundation row is very important because if you, you know, work your chains very tightly, your work is going to be a lot smaller than what it needs to be, so just make sure that you chain loosely. We are simply going to straighten out our chain and we want to make sure that we do not twist our work. So you're going to take your crochet hook and you are going to go to this very first chain right here that we created and we are going to place our hook into there just like that. Take your working yarn okay, and we are going to slip stitch that through and you have created a circle okay for round one you, we are going to chain three and our chain three is going to count as our very first double crochet so chain three one two and three Okay, 
So being that I want this to be very beginner friendly, I'm going to be working a little bit slower. If you are more advanced, simply chain three and double crochet all the way around. So what we are going to do is if you are a beginner, this can be quite tricky because you know if you're very very brand new to crocheting you're simply not knowing where to place your stitches and this can be very confusing for somebody who is new so what we want to do is yarn over okay we are going to be working one double crochet around now being that the chain three counts as a double crochet we put nothing into the same stitch right here okay so you see this right here we don't put nothing there but right here where you see this V, which is a chain, we want to put our double crochet into there. So simply yarn over your hook and we are going to place a double crochet into there. So what you want to do is place your hook into the V, okay? And what you're going to do is work over your straggler in the back there. You're going to pull down okay and then kind of pull up a little bit you will have three strands of yarn onto your hook okay so there's one two three then what we want to do is take your hook put it underneath this yarn right over here see that you're going to pull your yarn through two of these uh, two strands of yarn there's one and two so pull through one and two you want to yarn over again with your hook and pull through those next two stitches okay and then you have created a double crochet so this is your first double crochet and this is your second double crochet so we want to continue to work one double crochet all the way around and you will have a total of 38 double crochets okay so pull up a loop then you got three strands of yarn, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, and pull through two. Okay, and then we're going to continue to do this all the way around. If I am starting to speed up a little too fast for you, simply rewind the video and go ahead and follow my directions, and you can pause and play by step by step okay so I'm gonna continue to place one double crochet around the whole ring when you are done this will be your very last double crochet you want to make sure that you have 38 double crochets especially if you are a brand new crocheter and if you you should hit 37 here and then this chain three will be number 38 so right here is where we chained up three we want to go ahead and slip stitch to the top of the chain three here's one two and three we will go ahead and simply put our hook through there and pull up a loop through there okay and then we are going to pull that through this loop right here and that is considered a slip stitch for round two we are going to chain three once again at the beginning of our round one two and three again this is our very first double crochet so we never put nothing here just to make myself clear for those who are new we are going to do an very advanced stitch for those who are new to crocheting and I keep mentioning this because I have um, a lot of people who are brand new to my channel who are just starting out crocheting so I am trying to make this uh, very easy as possible for you guys so apologize if I'm working a little slower today for those who are more advanced so we are going to be working what's called a uh, front post double crochet into the next stitch and may I mention that this will be a back stitch known as a back post double crochet so this will be considered that stitch into this very next stitch this is considered a post 
okay? So what we want to do is work around the post and how you do that is you yarn over and you, it's almost like doing a double crochet but you're working around the stitch. To do this, you are simply going to yarn over your hook and you're going to take your hook, place it into the back of the post like that, okay? And then you're going to take your yarn, okay? And then simply pull that down through the back and that's underneath the stitch, okay? And we're going to pull that up and you should have three stitches like you would a normal double crochet and you're going to yarn over pull through two yarn over and then pull through those next two loops and you have completed your first front post double crochet if you need to see that done a lot more slower please simply rewind and watch it as many times as needed to learn how to do this you know you're gonna have a lot of practice this stitch on this pattern because we are doing it uh, primarily up until uh, round six so what we are going to do next is into the next stitch right here we are going to do a back post double crochet and a back post double crochet is a uh, stitch that's basically worked the opposite way so if we were to turn our work, this would look like a back post double crochet. So it's sitting in the back, and if we were to do a back post double crochet, when you turn your work, it would look like a front post double crochet. So what we do is yarn over, and what we do is place our hook behind instead, okay? So you put your hook behind the post, and you stick it through, okay? And then you see this hole right here, you are going to stick it through there as well. And so your hook is going to be sitting in the back. And what we want to do is take our yarn, pull it down and over the stitch, and then pull that down again and pull that through, pull it up. Okay, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And that is a back post double crochet. What we are going to do in the next stitch is do a front post double crochet. To do that, remember, yarn over, okay, go through the back of the post, pull that through, down. And what we are going to do next is yarn over through two, yarn over, pull through two, okay? And then you're just going to repeat that, okay? So then we're going to do a back post double crochet, okay? Pull that down, down, and then up, okay? Yarn over, pull through two, whoops. And then yarn over, pull through two. Okay, and then we're going to do into this next stitch is a front post double crochet. And going to pull that down, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, okay? So go ahead and keep repeating this all the way around, okay, in the very same fashion that we've been doing. So the next stitch will be a back post, and then this will be a front post, and so on and so forth. So I have come to the end, and you should have a front post double crochet as your very last stitch. So what we are going to do next is slip stitch to the top of the chain three because that's our very first double crochet. So here's our chain three. We're going to slip stitch to one, two, three, the top of the chain right there. Okay, so what we're going to do is slip stitch just like that. For round three all the way until round six, we are going to repeat round two and I will do one more round with you guys but after that I'm going to leave you to it until we reach round six okay so we are currently on round three okay so what we want to do is start off by chaining three one two and three we are going to repeat exactly what we did remember that this is a uh, back post 
So what we're going to do is yarn over and then put our front post double crochet. Now if you're new to the whole front post and back post stitch, you're going to be able to identify easily these stitches because the front post double crochet sticks out while the back post double crochet you don't feel or see anything much except that it's flat. So automatically here we know that we have a front post double crochet because you can feel it sticking out. So you want to put a back, sorry, you want to put a front post double crochet and to do that you go behind the post like you did before and we are going to pull that through underneath the post yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two okay so now into the next stitch we know we have a back post double crochet because it's not sticking out so yarn over go through the back of the post pull up some yarn pull that through and you may have some okay okay so pull through two and then pull through two sorry I had some uh, splitting yarn there I hate when that happens okay and then automatically we know we have a front post double crochet here because it's sticking out so we want to put a front post double crochet and that's basically all you're doing if you know that there is a back post double crochet put a back post okay and then if you have a front post double crochet, you put the front post double crochet. Okay, so it should be um, switching on and off to a front post and a back post. I really love uh, playing with the stitch. It's very fun. Okay, and then we're going to do a front post double crochet there. And then a back post double crochet and then pull through two, pull through two and then a front post double crochet and then into the next stitch we have a back post And then a front post and then a back post and as you go along your the the band of the neck is going to get thicker and that's what we want so that's how it's looking it looks really cool and the reason for the front post and back post double crochet for those who are new to my channel or even new to crocheting is um, to give it that knit look so that's why I chose to use the front post and back post double crochet. So we are going to continue this until we get to round six and I will meet you guys back here as soon as we are ready for uh, round seven. Okay, so I have made it to round six, and we are moving on to round seven, is what we're doing, and what we are going to do is chain one, and we are going to single crochet into this very same stitch right here, where we chained up one, and to do a single crochet, simply just place your hook inside of the hole. Okay, you're going to pull the loop through, you're going to have two strands of yarn onto your hook, yarn over and pull through those two and you have created a single crochet. Into the next stitch place another single crochet, so place your hook through, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. Okay, into the back post double crochet, which is our third stitch, we want to place two single crochets, which is considered a increase. Okay, so place two single crochets into there. One and two. Okay, and then place one single crochet into these next two stitches. One 
and two. My, it's very windy outside. If you can hear the wind, it's soothing. And then into this front post stitch right here, we're going to place two single crochets into there. Okay, one and two. And then we're going to put one single crochet into the next two stitches. There's one and two. And then we're going to increase by placing two single crochets. Okay, one and two. Okay, so we're going to continue to repeat this all the way around, one single crochet into the next two stitches, and then we will place an increase of two single crochets after that. And that will leave us with a total of uh, 50 stitches. So we have finally come around, and I placed one single crochet all the way around. So this is round seven. You should end with 50 single crochets. And we will go ahead and slip stitch to our very first single crochet right there. And just slip stitch that through. And if you are not going to be changing your color, then you can just move on to round eight. But I am going to change my color, so I'm just going to chain one and finish off See. to start a fresh color you want to create a slip knot again like you did to begin the pattern okay and then you're going to place your hook into the uh, the slip the slip knot oh my god I can't even think right now it's so hot in the room I apologize okay so what we're going to do is where we finished off right here you see this little tiny hole right here we are going to simply place our hook into there this is how I like to change colors okay so grab your straggler Okay, we'll go ahead and place your thumb right there to hold it. And I'm also holding the straggler that's behind here where I finished off. You're going to slip stitch that through. Okay, and we are going to chain three. One, two, one, two, and three. I apologize. So what we are going to do for round 8 is this already counts as our very first double crochet. So we don't do anything there. We are going to simply place one double crochet into the next 49 stitches for a total of 50 stitches. Okay. So all you're doing is placing one double crochet all the way around and make sure that you have 50 stitches okay so I've come to the end of round 8 and my colors are going to be a little off because this is a stripe variegated yarn so it might be part blue part brown it's going to be a little different so what we are going to do is from round 9 all the way until we get to round 12, we are going to repeat round 8. Chain 3 and then just place one double crochet around. So what I like about this pattern is for this uh, poncho, we are not working with any armholes at all. And this makes it very flexible to make it for any size dog because all you have to do is just measure the neck and uh, pretty much just increase to fit the chest and to fit the back and just make it as long as you want and it's j really just that simple. So I am going to be making a large size dog poncho as well. So yay, another large dog pattern is coming. I've already been working on it and using my model to experiment with it. 
and we're just placing one double crochet all the way until we reach round 12 and we're going to continue in this fashion just putting one around and this is the easiest part just putting one around so I'll be back in just a moment as soon as I get to round 12 so I have reached round 12 and we are now going to be working on round 13 so for round 13 this is going to be our last round for the chest okay so what we are going to do next is chain four one two three and four so this chain three counts as a double crochet plus a chain one so what we want to do is skip the next stitch okay and we want to work into this third stitch right here and place a double crochet plus a chain one we're going to skip the next stitch and into this stitch we're going to place a double crochet plus a chain one skip the next stitch work a double crochet into the next stitch place a chain one so there's one two three four so we're going to skip this stitch, work a double crochet, plus a chain one, there's five, skip a stitch, work into this double crochet, and place a, whoops, a double crochet plus a chain one. We want to do this until we have a total of eight double crochets and chain one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and skip the next stitch place a double crochet chain one and skip a stitch and double crochet and chain one okay so we have a total of eight one two three four five six seven eight okay so now what we're going to do is continue to double crochet around and into this next stitch this is where we're going to start and you're going to double crochet into the next 25 stitches one and actually l let's put a stitch marker right there because I want to know where my stitch ends so this is the eighth stitch so we're going to put a stitch right here to let us know that this was where our last chain was our double crochet and chain one is so continue to put one double crochet until you reach stitch number 25 okay so this doesn't count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and one more, 25, right here. 
Okay, so we want 25, so we should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 stitches left. You want an uh, odd number. So what we are going to do is um, chain 1, okay? We're going to skip the next stitch and go into here and work a double crochet plus a chain 1. Okay, skip a stitch and into the stitch place a double crochet plus a chain one and we're going to repeat that until we get to the end skip a stitch place a double crochet chain one skip a stitch double crochet chain one skip a stitch double crochet chain one and so we have a skip stitch right here so there's one stitch left you're gonna skip that and then join to the one two three the third chain not the fourth because there's four we're going to slip stitch there okay and that's going to leave our spaces there okay so we should have one two three four five six 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 spaces in the front for our poncho. Okay? So, what we're going to do is slip stitch and then chain one and then finish off. Okay? And then you can weave in those ends if you'd like. Pull that through. And that's how the front looks and this is how we're going to do the fringe so this is where the fringe will go we'll tie our fringe at the front okay but um, we're going to take before I forget this is our first so we have them marked for later to know where to stop doing our fringe you don't have to do that but this is how the back looks okay so we are going to begin the body and to begin the body we are going to attach the yarn to the ninth stitch and this will be after the eighth double crochet and chain one so right here is where we're going to join our yarn create a slip knot we are going to join to this double crochet right here, which is our very first double crochet after our double crochet chain one. And what we are going to do is chain three, and this is going to count as a double crochet, one, two, and three. And we are going to work over our straggler here so we don't have to tuck in any ends later. So we're going to work until we get to the other side to the 25th stitch. And, and 25 okay so this is our last stitch so now what we're going to do is chain three for row two one two and three now we are going to be working in rows you know working back and forth back and forth so we are going to work from rows 2 to 12 okay this is considered row 1 and remember the chain 3 count so you just go into this very next stitch right here okay 
we work right here nothing here just here this is our first stitch and what we are going to do is just place one double crochet back and forth okay and when you get to the other side chain three and then just place one double crochet across and that's all you're doing until you get to row 12 okay so I will do this row with you and then we are going to work our rows and then come back okay so see right here we got one two three four five six seven Twenty-four, and then we are okay. And so, into the last stitch, we should have a chain three. You want to work into the top of the chain for our twenty-fifth stitch. Okay. So make sure you have 25 stitches, including the chain 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. So you want to have an odd number, okay? This matters in the long run because um, of the way we end it, but if not, I mean, it's not really that important if you don't want to end it the way I do. Okay, so from here on and throughout, I am moving to uh, row 3 all the way until row 12, and then once I reach row 12, then we're going to finish off with row 13 and then work on our fringe. Okay, so I've just reached the end of row 12, and I just wanted to note that you can do as many rows as you need to for more coverage. Just keep going. Uh, this was, you know, to my liking for my dog. So once you go ahead and get finished with all the necessary rows that, you know, you wanted, you are going to end with this ending but for me it is going to be row 13 because I only did up to 12 rows so, so what you're going to do is chain 4 which counts as a uh, double crochet and a chain 1 so we're going to flip our work right side facing Okay, so for row 13, we are going to skip the next stitch, and in this stitch right here, we are going to place a double crochet, and a chain one. Skip the next stitch, place a double crochet into the stitch after that, double crochet, chain one, skip a stitch, double crochet, chain one chain one skip a stitch and sing uh, double crochet into the next stitch I'm gonna say single crochet chain one skip the next stitch double crochet chain one skip the next stitch double crochet chain one skip the next stitch 
double crochet, chain one. Skip the next stitch and then double crochet, chain one. Skip the next stitch, double crochet, chain one. Skip the next stitch and then place a double crochet. Whoops. Chain one. Skip the next stitch, double crochet, and then chain one. So in the end, you should have two stitches left. There is a double crochet, and then there's a chain three. You want to go ahead and skip this uh, double crochet and work into the top of the chain three right there. Okay, with a double crochet. And then you just chain one and then finish off. Okay, so this is the sweater so far. As you can see, we have no armholes. This is where the chest is. And then um, these sides, you're probably wondering, oh my god, these are very holy. Well, I did that purposely in my pattern because you're going to be looping through uh, some fringe for the sides because you're going to be putting fringe on every side so you're going to have fringe coming out this way and then fringe on the bottom here and you'll also have fringe coming here and that's how we're going to create our poncho so you can go ahead and select the color that you want to use for your fringe I am going to go back to my color and this is the color taupe I'm going to go back and use this color to cut fringe as you can either use a box and cut a uh, little line in the middle of a board and keep wrapping your yarn and then cut the bottom to get all kinds of fringe that might be the easier way unfortunately I have to do the harder way and I'm just going to kind of eyeball my fringe okay so I'm going to cut about 14 inches per piece of yarn and then I'm going to fold it in half and then attach my yarn to these spaces that's what the spaces are for is to attach the yarn so what I'm going to do is cut my yarn about right here 14 inches right there and I'm going to cut three per section so you figure there are um, a total of 14 slots here so 14 times three so we are going to be cutting approximately 42 14 inch pieces of fringe you don't have to make yours that long you can make yours as long as you want but I'm going to cut mine 14 inches long in order to get the size that I want at least a reasonable size so I'm going to continue to cut my piece of yarn 14 inches so what we are going to do to create the fringe is take three strands of yarn per section and they're not going to be perfect you know as you can see these don't even match up but it's okay just try to make them uh, match at the top and that's all that matters so then you'll fold them in half and you're going to go to a section which is right here I know that my stitch had ended right here so that's going to be my very first stitch so what you want to do is take your hook and make sure that these are even at the end and even if they're not it's okay but you're going to take three strands and slip stitch that through and then yarn over and then pull that through okay it's almost like a single crochet that through <clears throat> and don't worry about this okay it whether it's uh, even or uneven it doesn't matter see how that, all that's just not even it's okay so you're going to continue in this fashion taking three strands at a time or as many as you want
like that and then try to straighten it out as much as you can and then go through right here pull that through yarn over and then pull that through okay and then you don't want to put it too tight but you also don't want it loose because then the strands will come loose as well so I'm going to continue to do this until I meet the other side where my other marker is right here Okay, so now that I have all of my yarn, my fringe actually, what you want to do is comb out, comb out your yarn as much as possible and don't pull on it when you cut it because if you pull on it, it's going to be shorter than what you initially wanted. So what I'm going to do is cut across here and decide how long I want my fringe. So I'm going to want it about three and a half inches. So I'm going to cut about right here. Okay, right there. And can just cut across. And you can cut it however you feel comfortable cutting it. And then match up your other fringe with this one and like I said try not to pull on it because if you do it's going to be a lot shorter than what you wanted it to be so take your yarn and you can slowly and softly hold that Okay. I'm just putting that on the side and I'm just going to repeat that on this side as well okay so this is how the front looks this is how the fringe looks on the front and now all you have to do is work along the sides so you can do one every other row if you want to or you can do every row I did every row to be honest because I wanted to make sure it was full. So go on these sides and repeat what we just did here. So all you have to do is take three strands and slip stitch them through. And then uh, just keep going. Just keep going to every side and then work your way around, especially here. Okay? Okay, and there we have it. This is the finished product. This is my small crochet dog poncho. I haven't even given it a name yet, so we'll see. I guess by the time I post this, I will have a name for this cute dog poncho. It's too cute to not have a name. So this really does have like the Native American uh, vibe to me, which I am Native American. I thought I would design this really cute poncho for dogs. I mean, you see a bunch of ponchos for us, but you don't see any for dogs. So I figured I'd make one. And I hope you guys really uh, like this video. If you do, please make sure to give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't, please subscribe. It means a lot to me. Please leave a comment below. Let me know 
you know what you thought of this pattern and if you have any questions feel free to leave uh, a question below or even email me my email is always open to you guys and you can find my email below in the description box and I hope you guys try this pattern if you do please send me pictures I love seeing pictures of your pets